This is Tessie, eleven years old, toy poodle, diabetic, bad teeth, allergic, wounded, missing toes. Six weeks ago, I became a foster dad. HKDR, the charity which found Tessie, asked me to take care of her and to help improve her health until someone can give her a forever home. Though the charity has done everything to care for her, they don't know how she got to be in the state she is today. I keep wondering what happened to her, who mistreated her, and how many other dogs suffer like she did. I'm new to Hong Kong, and I don't know much about dog culture here. I decided to ask about it at my local dog park. So let's hear what they have to say. This is Turbo. This is Sophie. They are brothers. You know, Hong Kong people live in small house, and we it's difficult to raise a dog. And we love dogs, so we go to foreign here. They shop in pet. It's just like they think it's toy. They want to have a thing to show off. I I think not many people know that they are just not a famous breed, and people don't think they are. They buy it from pet shops. Hong Kong is just too small to have dogs. Too small. To have yeah, no, not that much place to、uh -huh. to take care of them. They can't run around. So most、uh, most of the people will choose the small dogs. I was just sitting here thinking today, it's quite nice to see so many mixed breeds, which I think come from either the SPCA or local dogs. I think people do just get、um, conned. Psychologically, when they walk through Hong Kong, but if you know if they've got an allergic child, they'd rather just buy a purebred poodle. Why buy the cross?、Um, and I'm of the view that the fact that having a puppy in the in the in the household is having another baby and requires so much work and training, and having a, a dog that's already fully grown, you know, all his if he's got any allergies or any problems,、um, that you can. A dog that they know that has a good history. That I don't think, and I do believe in euthanasia.、Mm. That、um, some dogs slip through the system that might be aggressive or that have problems, medical problems. And the veterinary fees in Hong Kong are extremely expensive. And the vets here don't offer you the cheap of treatment because it's not a sure treatment. Dog will recover or the dog will die, but it costs half the price or a third of the price. Of the treatment of tick fever, and it costs a fortune, costs a lot of money. You know, people do. People can be very vocal. You know, if a person does foster a dog, and then all of a sudden the dog gets sick, and it's going to cost them twelve thousand. And it is sad that if the dog is injected、mm. with Berenol for tick fever,、mm. and it does die, at least you've tried. No other medical ex expenses that might happen. But I think if you compare this park to anywhere else in the world, the dogs here are far more sociable than in. South Africa or Australia, where they、mm. run behind in big properties behind fences, and they don't see other dogs because the people think they've got a big property. They don't have to、yeah. walk them. But yeah, people are very good with their dogs. They really are. According to data from the SPCA, there are between 5,000 and 7,000 stray dogs in Hong Kong, and about 1,500 to 2,000 dogs are killed annually to keep down the number of strays. I spoke to Sally Anderson, the founder who works at HKDR, to find out more. We try to adopt what we take in, so that you know we're not we don't just keep adding and adding. So so it kind of balances out. Well, keeping you know funds coming in、uh -huh. because obviously looking after six hundred dogs costs a lot of money. Vet、yeah. bills, food bills. You know, staff, everything. So we are constantly needing the funds to come in, and, and rewarding. Because、uh, a lot of people are first-time dog owners. When they think about, I want to have a dog, they go online and they look at the breeds. So in their mind, that's all there is. There's these breeds. You know, you either get a Labrador or you get a Beagle or something like that. To try and persuade people that you know mixed breeds are just as good, if not better, than pure breeds, and to get them to come along to meet the dogs and you know, change their minds about. You know, we we do our best to make sure that people、uh, 
think about it before and to be honest I have to take responsibility in the sense that I let the puppies go without meeting the adopters. You know, they did the questionnaire online and they met the puppy in the foster home and they took them. I prefer to meet adopters and talk to them so that I can make sure that they're absolutely clear about and then we're also clear about what's mm -hmm. happening to the puppy. Like I said, first time adopters, they don't, all they think about is the, the breeds that are available because mm -hmm. that's what's online. You know, you don't go online and see, you know, mongrels and the yeah. laws that are coming actually some are being introduced in March to try and uh, control the breeders and to um, make sure that they give some at least basic care to the dogs rather than at the moment just, you know, yeah. nothing they'll adopt you know that's I mean a, a huge number of people buy if those huge number of people adopted there wouldn't be a problem or I mean not even it, you know they might not even just want a Labrador, but they want a black Labrador, and they want a female black Labrador, or and you know it's got to be a baby. A, a, a total lack of understanding of what a rescue organisation is. You know, we, we don't. I mean, we do get like you, if you read my blog, you'll know that somebody bought a poodle puppy in the pet shop one day and then gave it up the next day. So you know, we do have those types of dogs. We have uh, visits from corporate groups. Um, we have, you know, a volunteer groups from corporates that are doing their CSR, you know, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs. They all, they come in, in groups, you know, to do their, their volunteer. So, as much as possible, you know, education is, is the only way that's going to change the whole uh, view. You, I suppose, you know, to people if they're looking for a dog will just type in dog breeds, for example, or you could type in rescue organisations. But if you do that, you've already, you know, yeah. thought ahead and decided that you yeah. want to rescue. Yeah, as we see, the dogs are really like so big, but then here the dogs are kind of small. But even though they will grow up a little bit big. Because it's kind of like a race. I mean, you can just adopt a puppy and save its life. You have to pay a lot of money for a pet shop, but here... Yeah, you can save the puppy, right? Yeah. Look, how all, look how the puppies look. Yeah, they're so happy. The pet shop is so lonely. You can't interact. to neuter the dogs so uh, some of the stray dogs they keep breeding and breeding have more and more stray dogs that, that, that's the main problem yeah. I think uh, people in Hong Kong they tend to think the mixed breed dogs are more grumpy and with a scary look but yeah you can see actually most of them are very friendly but then um, they need some time to build a trust and uh, a bonding with humans because uh, they are not really you know they don't trust at the first time first second like the, some of the golden retriever you know they wag their tails to everyone but um, they will bark a lot at the beginning but then if you spend some time like now to sit with them to pet them they will eventually yeah, come to you yeah. so yeah some of them are maybe uh, badly treated before um, maybe abused so they they are scared of humans so they bark mm, I think the laws is still like that that the uh, education for humans is uh, uh, higher and uh, people will uh, tend to consider adoption now because in the past they don't really think uh, adoption is good or what they would just pay the money and buy the um, small puppies at any pet shop but then yeah uh, I think more and more organizations are raising the idea of adoption so I think yeah people the society now uh, uh, they they will think more on the adoption so, yeah. yeah I think uh, eventually people will uh, know more and more about like mixed breed, the good of mixed breed dogs and uh, um, adoption. Yeah, and uh, the government uh, policy, I think, is improving slowly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, let's see. From speaking to a lot of different people, I got the impression that despite many improvements to the lives of the dogs over the past century, 
new problems have started to appear in the last couple of decades. My hope is that more and more people get attention to the plight of abandoned dogs. There is still a lot of misinformation and ignorance concerning dog culture, from contributing to cruel breed culture to abandoning a dog because of lack of understanding about the responsibilities of adoption. <laughs>